Jerry James Stone. I'm here with Taylor Peterson, and cool. we're filming Drinking in Bed. When would it be filmed this last? It's been, it feels like it's been a while. It has been a little while. Yeah. It's been probably over a month. It's been really way too long. We have so much wine to go through. So much drinking to get done. <laughs> As you can tell, we have quite a few bottles that we're going to hit this morning. So um, we're going to start out with this Lindmar Estate uh, Chardonnay. It's a 2009 Chardonnay. It's 100%. Chardonnay. Uh, I think the alcohol is fourteen point one percent. I think that's it. correct. Yes. Um, so you'd have to drink a lot to get really, really drunk, which <laughs> is okay. Um, so I think the first thing to maybe talk about with Lindmar Estate. I mean, all the wines that we review are sustainable, but some of them kind of go above and beyond and do some really, really interesting things. And Lindmar, in order to like be sustainable, one of the things that they do is they grow vegetables and flowers along with the wines in order to kind of not be a monoculture property because growing one crop is really hard on the soil extremely hard on the soil yeah. and um so what they do is they grow all these you know fruits and vegetables and flowers but then they use the fruits and the vegetables to like as part of the charity so they have um they that produce ends up going to students who then learn how to cook which i think is great i mm -hmm. mean because kids just don't really know how to Cook. I could no. I could cook mac and cheese like kind of that was about <laughs> it you know yeah, it took me until <laughs> I started living on my own to realize that you know maybe mom's cooking was worth something <laughs> uh, but yeah I had no real uh, skills at all at uh, cooking and this does that yeah um, and then not only that the step beyond that is that once they've cooked all these meals um, they don't just go to waste they aren't just throwing them away they actually give them to uh, people who are suffering from cancer or AIDS um, through the through a charity that works with them. So the food goes from being sustainable on a winery to uh, high school students to help them learn to cook, and then it finishes all off um, by giving them to these people that are in need and could use uh, a good healthy meal. And it's definitely a triple win. I mean, yes. uh, you you want the best thing you can do for a vineyard is. I think Lola is jealous of my cat shirt, so she's like <laughs> trying to get in the shot here. The best thing you can do for a vineyard is have more than one crop. And so a lot of vineyards, what they tend to do is they use cover crops kind of between the grapes. They'll grow like beans and other, you know, sort of nitrogen rich crops, which help the soil. And then they till that back in. But Linmar, I mean, they're growing things that are actually edible, mm -hmm. which is great. And then on top of that, kids get to learn how to cook, which is wonderful. And these people who need like really good healthy food because it's good produce, you know, are mm -hmm. getting these great meals. So I mean, I don't, I don't know. It kind of warms my heart a little yeah, bit that like does. doing stuff like that. And on top of that, the property is beautiful. I mean, it's a really really nice. It's like being in the garden of Eden. I mean, it's just you know, it's not. Um, it doesn't feel like a farm really sometimes because stuff's just sort of scattered throughout. I mean, mix all the plants in together. Yeah. <laughs> and have you know, the carrots growing right next to the. Uh, right next to broccoli and kale and everything just kind of mix in and they also have a whole bunch of flowers as well Yeah, um, to kind of help you know, like you'd said so it's not a monoculture So it's keeping the soil fresh with different plants different roots always coming into it And you know teaching kids how to cook is really as a charity too. I mean because you know, it's yeah. like I mean that's I, <laughs> they it, eat. <laughs> Yeah, they, yeah, well, and I remember when I went to college um, You'll probably see her on she'll probably be joining us at some point, but uh, my good friend uh, Franny she grew up not knowing how to cook anything and just was like, thought everything came in a box, you know? And, um, and I wasn't particularly skilled at, at that point either. I mean, I mostly lived off beans and rice. I mean, that's, you know, college, it's expensive, you know? And so, like, I think most people live off ramen, but, um, you know, I've actually never had, I've never had top ramen. Was, that's what, like, got me through college. I, I know, I know, I know. Um, so I think we should taste this wine. Yeah, let's dive in and talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about how great yeah. uh, the winery itself is. I mean, even if you don't like the wine, you should drink it just because, you know, what they do. But Great cause? Yeah, it's a great cause. I forgot how much this, this wine was. Uh, I believe it was $30. For $30? Okay. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it's reasonable for... It is, it is. What do you think? It smells... It smells... Citrusy. Yeah. It's <laughs> very fruity. Yeah. Very fruity. Which is good for a Chardonnay. Yeah, it, it's nice and clean. It's a good, good, mm -hmm. good color on it. Um, Let's see that. <laughs> what do you think, Lola? Do you want? Do you want to have some? Sit. She's Sit. like, yeah. No. No. Too good for me. <laughs> right. Well, cheers. Cheers. Yes. Just 
just like it smells. Yeah. Very yeah. citrusy. Yeah. Yeah. It I, definitely has. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go for it. Oh, I would say it's. Yeah, it has lots of lots of citrus flavors to it. Uh, acidic. Yeah. Uh, you can definitely taste the acidity in there. Not yeah. oaky though, which is nice. No, not at all. You know, for a Chardonnay, that's always my my fear. I, yep. <laughs> I know that people like them. Talked about it before <laughs> with this, yeah. You definitely are not on the oak train. I'm not. I, well, I like oak. I mean, I like it. I like it. I do like oak. It's just that I think oak and Chardonnay, it's just sort of been abused. It's like, because mm-hmm. you can just get that really buttery, um, which I, and I actually like those flavors, but I think a lot of times it's used to sort of cover up crappy wine, <laughs> you know, and um, there's so much other stuff that can be going on, and then, you know, it gets hidden by this buttery oak part and it's like just not it's just becomes like sort of single note for mm-hmm. me you know mm-hmm. but this is really nice this is very very nice yeah it's crisp uh and you know like the the citrus does just stand out a lot like it's yeah like very citrusy yeah it definitely like sort of orange or yeah grapefruit yeah, fruitish yeah and it has it has like but it's not um it's not super sweet it's i mean mm-hmm. it's definitely sweet but it's not you know, syrupy like you would get from like a Vanier or something like that. It's, you know, it's flavorful and floral and, but has like a nice clean finish to it. I think that's sort of like that kind of lemony zest sort of kind of, you know, cleans it out. So you can drink a lot is what I'm trying to say. It's like, it's, <laughs> it's crisp. Yeah, it's and like, yeah, sometimes with those like more syrupy wines, uh, it can just kind of get too much. Right. Um, and you can have like a glass or two and then you're ready to move on to something, something else. But this, yeah, it's definitely like, Keep coming back to crisp, like that's just what it is. What and it has to it. For me, this is the kind of this is the kind of Chardonnay that I would serve with just like I would saute some vegetables, you know, a little bit, a little bit of butter and garlic, and you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't overly work the food at all. I think just something really simple um, sautéed, and this would just kind of clean it up a little bit, but you would still get a lot from the wine. I mean, it's it's nice. Since you're in the meat eating. Uh, <laughs> section of society <laughs> is there any particular meat dish that you would go with this or do you have any pairing notes um no i would i would guess i would go along, along with that um i would say more of like a fish would i guess would be more so yeah. the pescatarians out there you know, like, yeah, i think that'd be really nice with this and i think uh like a side of some vegetables like buttered vegetables yeah you were saying would be fantastic with this yeah um so get your get your uh buttered vegetables and some fish in there and you'll be set and just drink a lot of it. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. And it's going to a great cause, too. There's, There's something on some there that I can't quite place, though. There's, like, some sort of... I mean, something outside of the citrus. It's, like... I mean, it's floral. It has, like, some floral notes to it, but I'm trying... It's... It's not jasmine. It's, uh... It's really bothering me that I can't place it. It's, it's like, come on, palette. I bet it's in their notes somewhere. It probably is in their notes. Um, okay, I don't think we're out of time just yet, so I'm gonna try to figure it out. I'm okay. gonna try to figure it out. <laughs> do you think it's, do you find it to be floral at all? Um, yes, yeah, but I guess I'm not sure what you're after on this one. I, I'm not much help on. I guess I <laughs> you're like tell. I'm just here to drink. Yeah, <laughs> I'm here to drink and tweet, and like you know, pet the cat. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure what what flavor you're after. Honeysuckle. Ah, honeysuckle. <laughs> Um, what did you get in specific? <laughs> it's, it's, well, I grew up, you know, I, uh, where I grew up, there was honeysuckle everywhere in our backyard. It was, mm-hmm. like, my favorite time of spring. It was just, like, smelling it when it bloomed. It was just, like, oh, I just lay in the backyard and be overwhelming. I grew up in Sacramento, and it was really freaking warm during the summers. I don't do well in warm, <laughs> and it would get, like, 105 degrees, and it would suck, but the part that was nice is the whole backyard smelled like honeysuckle, mm-hmm. so... Anyway, Very nice. I think uh, here's to Linmar and uh, growing vegetables for kids to cook and cancer and eat patients. Excellent. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.